dear, you're not eating. Oh, sorry. It's good soup. Maybe I'm sick of soup. Something's wrong. Woman's intuition. The painting didn't go well today, did it? Oh, yes, my dear. The painting went very well today. I can hang it on the wall along with all the others. And then what? Look at them. It's been two years since I had a showing. Two years! But the critics liked your work. Yes, the critics. They said I was a finished artist. How right they were. Where are you going? Why do I always go when I'm sick of soup? To Spangler, of course. You've pawned just about everything we own. What about the silverware? The stuff we got for wedding presents. Spangler has it all. No. I know. I swore I'd never pawn any of my paintings. Poor but proud, that's me. Loving a garret and all that sort of thing. Well, that's finished. But, Hector, not the still life. Why not? It's only a masterpiece. If we have to. Don't let him cheat you now. Oh, Spengler, how can you say that? He knows an original Hector Vane is worth $1,000. So maybe you'll give me 10 bucks for it. Mr. Spengler. Spengler is finished. I have taken his place. How can I serve you? I'd like to get a loan on this. Perhaps if we could have a little more light. I do not need the light. You painted this? Yes. Ah, I see you are a realist. I approve of that, young man. We must all face reality. That's why I'm here. Yes, indeed. There's abstractionist painters now, they're trying to escape. And of course, there is no escape. I'm beginning to find that out. Oh, those bearded young fellows with their stupid scrawls. I don't understand their work at all. I sometimes think they must paint with their beards. <laughs> <laughs> but this... This is real painting. You like it? Yes. The shoes look like shoes. <laughs> you have an unusual talent. What will you offer me for the picture on a loan? Nothing. Nothing? I do not deal in paintings. But it's all I have to pawn. Don't be so sure, Hector Vane. You know me? Your signature's on the painting. It tells me many things. Those old shoes. Poverty. You must be very poor. You should be rich, famous. Well, that's what I want, yes. But right now, I'll settle for $10 in cash. Don't be a fool. You can have anything you want. Everything. Who are you? Your benefactor. The one who can give you all that you desire. What the devil do you mean? Now, now, let's not mention any names. It's ridiculous. But the next thing I know, you'll be trying to get me to sell you my soul. Not sell, Mr. Vane. 
If you prefer, you can uh, pawn it with me. Pawn it? You mean a regular pawn ticket deal for 90 days? <laughs> that sounds like a reasonable length of time. Think it over, Mr. Vane. Fame, riches, whatever you desire. I don't believe it. You'll see. Suppose I agreed. Then what? How could I redeem my pledge? Very simply. By painting a picture for me. What's the matter with this picture? It's good. Ah, but that's a still life, Mr. Vane. Not really suitable for my collection at all. Now, but we'll talk about that later, after I fulfill my part of the bargain. Now, uh, will you be good enough to sign your name? Just to sign my name? That's all. Just a legal precaution. <laughs> legal? Oh, don't scoff, Mr. Vane. In my time, I had dealings with many lawyers. Sign here, please. Excellent. Here is your ticket. Redeemable at sundown on the 5th of April. It's all you'll need, Mr. Vane. It's all you'll need. Nothing wrong. Everything's right. He just called on the landlady's phone. He wants to see you Who? right away tonight. Who? Well, Eppert, your art dealer. He talked to Howard Lanson about your work. You mean the Lanson Art Gallery? That Lanson? Yes. He's planning a one-man show for you next month. Eppert says he's ready to buy six of the big oils now, particularly the still life. And he knows that during the show, he can, he can sell at least a dozen more. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Wonderful. Did you sell the still life? No. No, I didn't sell the still life. <laughs>
Mr. Vane, an unexpected pleasure. I didn't think I'd be seeing you this soon. Is everything satisfactory? <laughs> it's a dream. Life is a dream, Mr. Vane. I don't see how you do it. <laughs> Show, the sales, and now these wealthy people who buy my pictures. What do you know? They're even giving me tips in the market. I promised you fame and riches. And you promised me. But that's why I'm here. I thought if I uh, came a month in advance. Not quite a month now. 26 days, Mr. Vane. Just 26 more days. I know, but there's no need for you to wait. You have the picture for me? Where is it? Why, it's in my studio, of course. I painted it especially for you. It's a beautiful landscape. Landscape? Landscape? That's very clever of you, my dear sir. Very clever indeed. I didn't mean to be clever. I don't want a landscape, Mr. Vane. My agreement calls for me to make a choice. I want you to paint a portrait. One of those portraits that you alone can paint. A portrait that captures the soul. The soul? Why do you keep insisting on the soul? For a very good reason. Because I hold your soul in pawn. Unless you redeem it with another soul, I shall claim possession. Full possession. That means somebody else would be. You made the bargain, Mr. Vane. So it's your soul against another. Believe it. It's like a nightmare. Life is a nightmare, Mr. Vane. There's no other way. Don't take it so hard, my friend. I'm not limiting you. Whose portrait you give me doesn't matter in the least. Just as long as you paint faithfully, so that your genius will mirror the soul of the sitter. That would be murder. Worse than murder. Yes. Is that so terrible? Perhaps there's someone you would like to get rid of. Paint his portrait and satisfy us both. 26 days, Mr. Main. You have just 26 days. <laughs> Sentimental reasons. Besides, it has north light. North light? What difference does that make at night? I, I don't understand what's come over you lately. Sleeping half the day and only painting in the evenings. You don't understand me, period. <sighs> that overcoat. Why do you keep on wearing such a shabby old thing? For the same reason I keep the studio. Sentiment. Darling. You haven't been very sentimental lately. Maybe I've changed. Good night. <laughs>
is so sentimental. How can I help it? <laughs> you treat all your models this way. I never had a model like you before. Mm -mm. Back to your easel lover. Nadja. Nadja, darling. You're supposed to be a painter, not a sculptor. You keep treating me like a joke. What else am I to do? Hiding away with me here in this crummy little garret, then running off to that big penthouse of yours must give you a million laughs. Is that a joke? Is it? No. No. I never knew I could feel this way about anyone. Prove it. How? I'm going to Mexico for a year on April the 3rd. Come with me. April 3rd? I can't. Your wife giving a tea party for some of her rich friends? It isn't that. It'll take me just a couple of weeks longer. Go on. Keep asking for more time. I know that technique. Well, I'm sorry, darling. I have made my reservations. But I'll need more time to straighten out my affairs. I'm sick of that word, affairs. I'm talking about marriage. So am I. I thought I wanted money and fame. All the while, what I really wanted was you. <laughs> Never mind the analysis, darling. Save that for the psychiatrist. Psychiatrist? Of course. A psychiatrist could be the answer. The answer to what? It could be the answer to everything. say. Sounds a little wild, doesn't it? I've heard wilder. Yes, from your patients. You don't consider yourself my patient? No. What I've told you happens to be the truth. The truth, as you see it. As I've lived it. What is truth? Pontius Pilate asked that question long ago. The closest we've come to an answer is that there are two kinds of truth, objective and subjective. Yours is subjective. What you see in your own mind. I told you this pawnbroker actually exists. Everything really happened. Of course. It's all a matter of how you interpret them. Well, what's your interpretation, Doctor? Coincidence. You met this man. He played upon your suggestibility. There's nothing supernatural about it. He's the devil. He told you this? Not in so many words. Does he have horns? No. Hoops? No. A tail? No, of course not. I see, but you think he's Satan. But everything he's promised came true. Why? Because he promised? Or because it would have come true anyway? You've been a painter for many years. You told me yourself that sooner or later success was bound to come. That pawnbroker had nothing to do with what happened. But he has my soul. Did he go to that art gallery and force them to have a showing? Did he influence the critics? How could he make people purchase your paintings? Think a moment. You'll see that he had no part in it at all. You don't understand. He has my soul. Only if you want to believe he does. Only if you believe in him. You don't? Oh, in the old days, they called it demonic possession. Today, we know that evil spirits and devils don't enter human minds or human bodies. We recognize schizophrenia, the Paranoid syndrome. In other words, I'm not crazy, but the pawnbroker is. From your description, he would appear to be mentally disturbed. But what shall I do? My advice to you is to do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just stay away from him. But you don't understand. If you could only see him, you'd know. You'd feel better if I saw him? Would you just go to the pawn shop and see for yourself? Perhaps on one condition. What? that you consent to regular treatment. 
but I thought you said there was nothing wrong with me. I told you there was nothing supernatural involved in your problem, but there is a problem. Your immediate situation with your wife, with this girl. Don't you believe you need treatment? Yes, I need help. Miss Dexter will set up a schedule of appointments. But you promise you'll go see the pawnbroker. Well, ordinarily, I'd have no ethical right to interfere. But as your physician, yes, I'll see him. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. It's wonderful. You seem terribly gay tonight. It's a celebration. Oh. And what are we celebrating? My running away to Mexico? We're celebrating our running away to Mexico. Since when? I've made some new arrangements. I'm pretty sure I can get away. Just pretty sure. I'll know tomorrow. What happens tomorrow? I meet a man. He has something to tell me. And then we go away together. Margaritas in Monterey, tequillas in Tosco, salute to the brave bull, siesta in Sonora, and pick passion flowers in Xochimil. <laughs> it sounds wonderful, darling. It sounds too good to be true. But it is true. Tell me tomorrow, Hector. <laughs> Tomorrow. Dr. Frank? Dr. Frank? Good day, Mr. Vane. The doctor. Where is he? Let us say that he has been detained by another appointment. Permanently detained. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. You should be working. Working? Yes. You owe me a painting, remember? And don't waste your time sending doctors or policemen either. Just deliver the portrait. You have only 13 days left, Mr. Vane. 13 days. <laughs> I've been waiting over an hour for you. Where have you been? You're drunk. What happened? What's the matter? It's all finished. Please make sense. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. I thought I was imagining things. Out of my mind. Wish I were out of my mind. Darling, what did happen? What's the matter? You can't go. I said I can't go. I heard you. And now I'm waiting to know why. Something came up. I've got to paint a picture. I can't help it, I promise. You don't believe me. It's true. 
Let me show you. I've got to redeem this ticket. I've got to paint a masterpiece. <laughs> a masterpiece? Look at your hands. You couldn't paint anything. How much painting have you done since you've known me? I was to be your model, remember? Your model? Oh, that's a laugh. <laughs> All right, if you must paint, paint me. Let me be your masterpiece. No. No, I couldn't paint you. You don't understand. Yes, I do. I understand perfectly well. It's all a pack of lies. It's just an excuse. You couldn't paint anyone. No, listen to me. I'm through listening. You'll never leave her, will you? Leave who? I'm talking about your wife. Listen, that Marie's got nothing to do with it. Yes, she has. She's got everything to do with it. Who else is there to hold you back? Roger, I love you. I love you. Go back to her. Go back to that stupid wife of yours. Maybe she can help you solve your problems. Marie. My wife. Maybe she can solve my problem. Don't you buy yourself a new one? I haven't got time. From now on, we're going to be too busy. That's why I stayed down at the studio the past few days. I want to plan everything very carefully. I know. You told me when you called. I've missed you. Well, cheer up. You won't have to miss me any longer. From now on, I'll be painting right here at home. Is that the surprise you were talking about on the phone? Only a part of it. I'm going to do a portrait. But you haven't wanted to do portraits for years. I know. But this is going to be my masterpiece. You'll see. Have you chosen a model? Yes. You. You're going to paint my portrait? Believe me, for the picture I have in mind, I wouldn't paint anyone but you.
No, I've never spent a happier ten days in all my life. Ten days? Mm. Today's April 3rd. That's right, it is. April 3rd. When are you going to tell me? Tell you what? Who you painted the picture for and why you had to finish it in such a hurry. You'll find out very soon. Promise? I promise. Here. What's that for? Models fees. Oh, darling, no. Now, please, I want you to have it. You've been cooped up here day after day under such a strain. I, I want you to run downtown and buy something pretty, anything you'd like. Oh, but Hector, now, I you don't You heard what need... I said. Run along. Please? Oh, darling. You're so good to me. without me. The painting's finished. Where's your wife? I sent her off shopping. I wanted you to see the picture so you'd know I was telling the truth. Come on. What do you think? The best thing I've done, isn't it? Look at the coloring. The life. So that's it. What's wrong? You painted her. Of course, I had to. What do you mean you had to? You'd never paint me, would you? You painted her because you love her. You've always loved her. That's not true. This is the truth. This portrait. I can see what went into it. All the love, all the feeling. You don't understand. That's my masterpiece. Masterpiece! Mr. Vane, you have 48 hours left. 48 hours. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? all finished. May I look now? Don't touch it. Hector, please tell me what this is all about. You've been locked in here for two days and two nights painting steadily. I've been so worried. You won't have to worry any longer. We're going to be all right. Oh, yes, of course we are. But can't you explain? What time is it? A little after three. Three o'clock. April 5th. All right. 
right, Marie. You're entitled to know everything. I'll tell you the whole story this evening. This evening? After sundown. You trust me, don't you, darling? Of course, I always have. Then wait. In a few hours, I'll be free. We'll both be free. We... How would you like to take a trip? Just the two of us. You mean a vacation? Yes. Oh. Could we go to Mexico? No. No. Not Mexico. Suppose we flew to Paris. Paris? You really mean it? It's spring, isn't it? Oh, how wonderful. Oh, darling, why don't you rest a while and I'll go out right now and make all the arrangements. All right, new painting. It's very urgent. I can't afford to be late. Oh, darling, you have a visitor. He was waiting at the door when I came in just now. Strange man. He says he has business with you. Strange man. Where is he? I invited him in to wait. Something the matter? No. It's all right. Tell him to come in. In here? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Vane. It is evening, you know. I'm sorry I was detained. I accept your apology. You know why I'm here. Is it ready? Yes. Excellent. And uh, may I see it? You may. Over here. See for yourself. trickery is this? You asked for the portrait of any living person. Anyone. You said, give me my portrait. Well, there it is. Your portrait. You, you can't cheat me. I'm not cheating you. Don't deny that I painted your soul. Look, it's leering out of the canvas at you. Take your hideous soul and get out of here. I have given the devil his due. I never believed it possible that a mortal should trick me thus. Then you admit it. Yes, I do. You thought you had me, didn't you? You thought I'd sell my soul and that of my wife, didn't you? All you did was bring the two of us together again. What are you waiting for? It's your portrait. Take it and get out. Oh, uh, just one thing. I must ask you to return my pawn ticket. Of course. Marie, get my overcoat, will you please? It's in the closet. I know. You 
You sent Dodger to me, didn't you? Yes. Women are often my allies. I thought so. Well, it didn't work. See, I discovered something. I love Marie just as much as she loves me. Woman's love is damnation. This time, it's salvation. Here you are. I didn't want to spend all our money on me. I wanted you to have something new for our trip, too, so... I finally got rid of that old overcoat. Marie, where is it? Well, it was so shabby. You burned it! <laughs> oh, you women were often my allies. <laughs> Your coat is gone, and the ticket is gone, too. And only the ticket redeems you from me. You've done your part. You burned it. And now it's his turn to burn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>